All right, welcome. My name is Drew Sagawa from WordStand, and we are doing another session, another free live interactive session on how to study the Bible. And we have with us the Jim Milligan, my friend, and his BLB crew. And Jim, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over to you. Okay, well, welcome everybody, and it's good to see you guys again and uh, carrying on from last week in our uh, series on how to study the Bible. And as I said, we're gonna go ahead and venture into studying the word using Blue Letter Bible on the website. And so um, the, the short version for that is blb.org or type it out, blueletterbible.org, either one will work. And um, our, our, primary verse for our ministry comes from Psalm 138 colon 2, which if we just put there in the search bar we get, and it says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth, for you have magnified your word above all your name. And uh, what, that, that's one translation, one way to translate the Hebrew. Another way to translate the Hebrew would be as the NASB does. And it says, for you have magnified your word according to all your name. What kind of gets the, the sense of this is that God's word and God's name, they're on par with each other. And so if you uh, study the Bible and do a study on God's name, you will understand how important that is. Because basically God's name isn't talking just about what we might call him is talking about everything about him his nature his attributes that's all wrapped up when we talk about the name of god and so he's saying his word is on par with who he is in essence who he represents himself to be because for us that's how we know who he is is his word and so this is our verse for you have magnified your word above all your name and that's what this ministry is about to provide the word of god and study resources for it to all for free and so when you come to the page you land on this page and um, as you can see up here the kind of the your eye hits is to search the bible and you can put in here as i did a second ago you can put in a verse you can put in some words such as jesus faith and love which are right here and uh, that will do a search and we'll do all this in a second but just to or uh, if you had a very specific search uh, with question or quotation marks around it, it would do a very, uh, the, an exact search rather than a fuzzy search. So what I mean by that is if I hit Jesus, faith, and love, if I were to type that in, I would get all the verses in the Bible for the New King James, because that's the version I'm on, which you can see right up here. And... All the verses in the Bible, it occurs 24 times in eight verses where Jesus, faith, and love all appear together. Okay? And um, you can do your study from that point. It's highlighted in red, the different words, your search terms. And we go back and do another option where we do God of my salvation, let's say as an example. That's going to give us the exact phrase, God of my salvation. Okay, so those are the two ways you, you can kind of do a search. Two of many ways, by the way. And uh, that's just the reason I just started there was you come to the Bible. People say, I get to this page. What do I do? Well, go look at the Bible. Go, go search. Go find a, a, a reference. Go do something um, and, and begin your study, which we're, we're going to do in a second. But um, most people have some idea when they come what they want to do, but some people just want to come and go where the Lord leads them, if you will. So um, this is kind of our, our main area of focus. You can get help here to uh, tell you some information. You can get a quick navigation if you don't uh, want to type out the uh, for the uh, book references the canonical references and you can kind of just build i want to go to romans 4 and it'll take you to romans 4. but the easiest way would just be to type it in and go to romans 1 
and, and go there. I'm in the New King James. I can switch to any of these versions, which uh, I know I, with the New King James, because I know uh, Drew, you guys use that as your primary version, and, and uh, I do uh, my primary reading out of that as well. So we're going to kind of stick there, but there will be times we go off, and it's just easy enough to click and change and, and go read the Bible in another version. Um, let's say, for example, though, in a specific, you wanted to see what this verse read like in different versions. You can do that by clicking on the toolbar and going to Bibles. And now you have all the versions that we make available for you. You can see the differences. And I'm kind of just touching on this, just going through it. We're going to hit, hit these in detail a, late, a little bit later. But I just wanted to kind of get a flow of just start moving and, and uh, working with where we're going to be. So up here, you search the Bible. You can, you, uh, we talked about this when we were talking about the phone app. You can restrict your searches to Old Testament, New Testament, these major areas of the Old Testament, or these major areas of the New Testament, or any individual book. So if I uh, wanted to search just within those areas. And finally, a topic. You could put a topic like eternity and you would get um, not only here in the primary results, the word, the, the verses, but if you came over here to dictionaries, you get dictionary entries on eternity. Or you could come over to the FAQs and get some frequently asked questions about eternity. And finally, the lexicon I'm gonna leave for a little bit later until we uh, can get a little bit more in detail. But just this, kind of just to, to view this area here, is kind of the control center when you come to the, to the home page. Uh, on the left-hand side, we just kind of have some news and some new items that we put up. So these are some of the images from our previous calendars and uh, just information. On the right-hand side, we have our verse of the day and down below, we have 10 verses on a particular topic. And for today's um, time together and this month and where we're at with coronavirus, our, our 10 verses are on protection. And so we've got 10 verses if you want to view that God says, and if you just highlight over it, uh, it'll pop up for you. Peace I leave you with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be distressed or lacking in courage. And then you could just click on that verse and, and go view it in co context as well. And so that's the homepage structure kind of stays the same. We'll visit this multiverse retrieval in a little bit, but uh, this is uh, the basic homepage entrance. But the ultimate is, where, what do we want to do? Is we want to get to the Bible. And um, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's pick the most well-known verse, John 3, 16. And how do I go about, how do I go about uh, thinking and studying this? How do I want to delve a little bit deeper? And the first thing I would say is you read it in context. And so I, these little paragraph markers that are here for you to show you uh, where there's a paragraph, I at a minimum would leave, read the verse in the context of a paragraph and just read it and understand it, what, what is going on here. This, as you read it in context, this is where Nicodemus comes and asks Jesus, you know, how can basically, how do I have eternal life, Rabbi? And, and uh, Jesus says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, I don't understand that. How can you be born again? And Jesus explains to him, he's not talking about the flesh, but he's talking about being born again of the spirit. And then we come to the bottom line. Well, how, do, how does that happen? And uh, John 3.16 explains it in a short 3.16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the Holy Begotten Son of God. And so here, one, we see that aspect of the name of God in um, this verse alone, in the name of the Holy Begotten Son of God. That's whose uh, name salvation comes. And it's not the physical name. It's not because, you you know, there's a lot of Joshua's around because that's what Jesus' name name is it's a greek alliteration of of the hebrew word joshua we're talking about a specific joshua we're talking about a specific joshua that is the everlasting god second person of the trinity we're talking about the one that came was born in nazareth of a virgin died on a cross that's all wrapped up when we talk about that name we're talking about belief in a person and what he's done and so we have, we have our verse here, and we have this button over here that talks about tools. What are the different tools that might be there for us to study this? There's an interlinear, Bibles, which are the different translations, cross-references, commentaries, dictionaries, and other miscellaneous items uh, that fall into a general category. And so um, the first thing you do is you can highlight it and select any one of these, or if you just want to click on the tools button, it'll go to your default. And we'll talk about that at some point, but when you log in and create account, you can set your default Bible, you can set your default tool, you can set your uh, many other aspects of that, and we'll go in and do that in a second. And um, I, in fact, let's go ahead and do it now, so. I'm gonna log in. If you have, you can create an account if, if you haven't register for a new BLB account, but I'm just gonna go ahead and sign into our demo uh, account that we use when we give demonstrations. And so I would suggest you, you go ahead and do this, but when I, I go ahead and click on the gear button, it tells me that uh, my default Bible translation is the NKJV. My default tab is the interlinear. In the interlinear, I like the, the forward interlinear to be the default. Um, different things such as this nature. Do you want the words of Christ in red? Yes or no? Uh, what color do you want your Bible text? It is blue letter Bible. I have mine to be dark blue. It's hard to tell from the black, but it's uh, it actually is dark blue. Do you want to read your Bible by paragraph or verse by verse. I, I choose verse by verse. For certain versions, you can show the Strong's number or hide the Strong's number. So these are things you can set in what little widgets are on the right hand side, and we'll get to those later. And then I'm just going to save my preferences and go back to my study. And so now those are all set. So whenever I click on the tools button on any verse, it's, for me, it's going to open up to the interlinear because I tend to spend a lot of time here. I think what for the purposes of this demo though, I'm gonna change it to Bibles. But I just wanted to show you how to do that. So we come down, change it to Bibles. I'm gonna save my preferences and return to my study. And so now if we come up and I click on tools, it goes to the different translations, the different Bibles. Uh, if you're interested in, this would probably be my wife's default button as she's the teacher for our women's ministry in our church. Uh, she uses a TSK, which is what this is, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, all the time. So she might have that as her default button or commentaries or dictionaries. You can set all these as your default or just choose them as, as we have. Even in the here, I might want the, uh, since I'm normally in the New King James, I might want the NASB at the top. So I just drag it up there and it will remember it in the session where I am. Maybe I want the new KG, NKJV under that and the ESV. So now the next time I go, I go up here, it's gonna be in that order for me. And so just drag them. Uh, some of you speak Spanish. We've got the Spanish RVR down there. Or for those who speak Latin and really wanna read in Latin, we've got the Vulgate or uh, the Greek, for the New Testament and the Hebrew for the Old Testament. So there's different Bible translations available. So the first thing just to, in our little study here, we're gonna go back to John 3.16. Little X button closes it. 
or just clicking another verse. Clicking on the verse button right here on the actual reference does the same thing as clicking on the tools. It's just it doesn't have a drop down. So it just takes me right there and I can read uh, different versions. For example, the NASB will use eternal life instead of everlasting life. You might uh, uh, just see different aspects in different versions that um, probably not too many people are not going to play with this verse because everybody knows every translation knows this so well it's, it's not it's kind of like Psalm 23 uh, most of the translations Psalm 23 is pretty much the same in each one because uh, it's so well known that uh, they will not play with it too much uh, in terms of, of uh, even the NIV or something which tries to make things uh, uh, more up to date in terms of idioms uh, will not play with those kinds of verses. So just reading the Bible, uh, seeing different differences in, in the translations. Um, the other tool is the cross references. And um, here's a good one for a cross reference. As long as we're in John, I'm going to go out, that big search bar that was there on the home page. This is the same thing right here at the very top. So you don't have to, you don't have to go. Uh, back to the home page. You can just do it right there. I'm, I'm going to go to John 8. I'm going to go to John 8, 58. And when you go to a specific verse, it'll come up highlighted in gray, as it is here. And when you highlight a verse on the page, it goes in yellow as you scroll down. But John 8, 58. Jesus, he was talking with the Pharisees and the scribes and they of course don't like what Jesus says most of the time and so John 8 58 Jesus says to them most assuredly I say to you before Abraham was I am this is because he said he talked about up above again in context if we go back up he talks about the fact that uh, he uh, being the temple of God and 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 being uh, who he is, he says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad because Jesus is basically saying he's fulfilling a promise in this. Um, and up above in 854, he claims that the God, that God the Father honors him. Um, and so he's making all these claims. But then down in 858, he says, most assuredly I say to you before Abraham was, I am. And then we see the reaction, and they say, it says, then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And so you, you might ask yourself, quite, why did they pick up stones to throw at him? I mean, now, if you just took this at face value, at worst, it seems, what Jesus is saying is, you know, I'm, I'm a thousand years old. I'm, I'm, I'm older than Abraham. And, you know, uh, they might dismiss him as, you know, a kook of some kind or, you know, uh, but why pick up stones? And, and we can find that out uh, if we happen to come back up to 858. And we click on the cross references. And re remembering from last week, we talked about the treasure of scripture knowledge. It's, it's based in the New King or the King James. And so they have these phrases. and. Uh, up until the point of the red is one phrase, and then from there to the next one is another phrase, and then, um, I'm sorry, starting with here, because there isn't one at the start, verily, that's one phrase, before Abraham was is another phrase, and then I am is the last phrase. And if you scroll down, you get those various cross-references in the version you selected so in our case it's in the new king james uh it's but it's segregated based upon this in case the wording is slightly different well, i'm just going to go ahead and go down to i am and where does that reference us to and the first reference exodus 3 14. In exodus 3 14 and god said to moses i am who i am and he said thus you shall say to the children of israel I am has sent me to you. And the reason they picked up stones is because Jesus was claiming to be the presence that was in the midst 
of the burning bush that was speaking to Moses. And basically, uh, he's saying, I am Yahweh. Um, I am who I am. And so what did they do? They picked up the stones to stone him because they felt he was being blasphemous and claiming himself to be God. And you find that out through a cross-reference. You can get there and you can go and you can see that. Now, you may, you may already know that you have a good pastor. Pastor Drew's probably already covered some of that, so I'm sure. But as you hit these depths of scripture, you can kind of see those things as you go into cross-references and see other points of scripture. Scripture interpreting scripture. And so um, that's one of the basic tools that we have in studying scripture. I'm going to go ahead and go back to John 3.16 and see what else we had. So cross-reference, finally commentaries. Not finally, I'm sorry, next commentaries. We have audio commentaries and we have text commentaries. So, and these are, these are ordered in the order of the pertinence to that verse that you clicked on. So you will see a number of items for John 3.16, and then it will go for John, other areas in these commentaries where it references John 3.16, but it's on a different subject. And so we could go to, let's say, Job 5 through 10, and right up here it'll say, click here to view the listing for John 3.16. So within this commentary on Job 5.10, Pastor Chuck Smith references John 3.16, and you can scroll down to try to find that. Depending upon the length of the sermon, it might be a lot. It might not be bad to read it anyway, but if you click here, you will go down in it to the context that he states it. The infinite God reaching down to touch the finite man. God so loved the world that he gave, John 3.16, and so that's the context in this sermon that he's referencing John 3.16. And so we, we call these um, uh, primary references, where it's, it's referencing exactly the verse, the sermon is on the verse that you're studying, or secondary references, or even tertiary references where it becomes it's very, very layered, but you get to choose. And so we have a lot, Chuck Smith spent a lot of time talking about John as you can see, uh, David Guzik, you can go down, Matthew Henry, classic, C.H. Spurgeon, R.A. Torrey, Martin Luther, J. Vernon McGee, I'm sure many of you have heard J. Vernon McGee, and so on. So we have a, a number of, of people, and, and each one has a different uh, context or a different viewpoint, so you can kind of view what, um, you know, what Martin Luther might have been saying about John 3.16 within his study on Isaiah. And so it just allows you to, to kind of go down those rabbit trails as, as the Lord leads you. The other way would be to listen to sermons. So uh, we could have, you can, uh, most of them, uh, with the exception, I think, of two authors who haven't given us permission, you can either download it, listen to it wherever you want, or stream it live. We're going to just stream it. We have been in a series on Sunday morning on the purpose of the coming of Jesus Christ. Christmas tree in the house. So you, you can listen to the sermon um, related to that, or download them and, and uh, read them later, listen to them later. Um, go. And again, a number of different um, authors. Walter Martin, here's a good one, The Foolishness of God. If you ever want to go listen to a good sermon, go listen to The Foolishness of God. You can just, I'll show you how to get there later on. But uh, if, uh, when you come back to it, it's uh, in a different way. Um, the, these are uh, audi audios that uh, the author or his ministry, if, if they're past and with the Lord, uh, have given us permission to use. And then below that, are we partner with Sermon Audio. And Sermon Audio has given us access to all of their content. 
And so in the sermon audio, we will go through and pick certain authors that we think are pertinent that we would reference to on this verse. And that uh, they're kind of listed there individually. And then at the bottom, you can go search out other uh, sermon audios. We don't necessarily uh, would agree with everybody that's on sermon audio. So we don't put everybody there. Plus it would just overwhelm it. Um, so those are uh, different aspects and our partner with sermon audio. We do have some Spanish. So we have J. Vernon McGee in Spanish, Xavier Reese in Spanish, if you want to listen to Spanish sermons. And then other study tools that uh, they're not specifically commentaries. They're not specifically sermons. Let's say this is a, uh, the expose on Mormonism. So how more this might relate to um, this aspect of the cults. And I think uh, uh, this is from Eric Grieshaber on uh, the expose of Mormonism. And so different study tools that you might see where this is uh, being used. Probably one that uh, one thing that we ought to think about doing is moving this harmony of the gospels because I use I like this a lot harmony of the gospels right to the top I think it is on the app but uh, this will give you a harmony of the gospels showing where this event occurs in the the different gospels so we're dealing right here with uh, John three sixteen which is right here. And what this tells us is this event with Nicodemus doesn't exist in any of the other gospels. And, but uh, if we, we were in uh, John and John the Baptist in prison, you would see the different places in the different gospels where that's mentioned. So you could go to each gospel and read the account because each gospel will be, uh, will be different. They're written from different perspectives. The Holy Spirit inspired them differently to to cover different events and to cover different perspectives of the same event and uh, let's go back to john three sixteen. dictionaries these are different topics that are covered within that verse so eternal life everlasting what faith is different aspects atonement the book of life that you could go and read about the topic that's in it and it, and it kind of goes these condensed these first two are very condensed so if we went to atonement and and that's a a relatively short definition and when we talk about the topic of atonement what do we mean when we talk about atonement what does it encompass versus if we were to go to atonement in the international standard bible encyclopedia it would be much more in depth and uh, so is, as you can see, significantly more content. So each one has its own uh, flavor. Uh, King James Dictionary will explain words like begotten. What does begotten mean? Because it, it tends to be an older word that we don't use today uh, quite so much. Or it could even mean that the meaning has changed over time and that does occur with KJV uh, words. Uh, this is kind of the BLB uh, subject guide, our, our own little uh, one that we got from somebody and have played with. Uh, Tori's new topical. So this will go through different things such as Christ as God, as Jehovah, as Jehovah of hosts, as Jehovah the shepherd, and you'll go to these different verses. It's kind of a, an in-depth cross-referencing system by topic rather than by uh, verse structure. So those are, they're just different kinds of, of dictionaries. Um, Hitchcock's topical analysis is a unique, uh, a unique one. And what uh, Hitchcock did, uh, I think he's back in the uh, early 19th century or late 19th century. Um, he took every verse of the Bible and he uh, assigned a topic to it and only one topic to it. And so he has all of these topics, and if you want to go and it will, it will get you a predictions concerning John, and it'll, here are all the different ones that are uh, verses that relate to uh, John. And uh, 
and that being John the Baptist. So this is Christ's forerunner. So here, here's verses that relate to John being called the forerunner of Christ. And so he went through all 31,102 verses in the King James context of the Bible and uh, assigned each verse to a topic. And so um, this is a way for your studying a topic to come here first and uh, just kind of look through these and you can, you can find different uh, information on topics like the family and widows, orphans, and different aspects of that. Okay, so we're going to go back to John 3.16 again. And we'll hit our final two tools, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous are images that relate to that verse. And so think of this as illustrated children's Bible or uh, from very old, uh, very uh, well-known pictures uh, such as these, which are um, engravings that are done and I don't even know if you're going to be able to kind of how much these are all like you could the high resolution of these are very high so if you actually downloaded it it would be very high and, and people take these and colorize them and do things I see I've seen these on uh, other websites where they've uh, used them as logos and things and wondered if this is where they got them because we've scanned these in from uh, the 16th 17th and 18th century uh, books that we have purchased and, and scanned in these items. So images, you kind of have thumbnails at the top where you can go through different images and kind of see this is the temptation of Christ, Satan tempting him. And you kind of get a little illustrated Bible of uh, this is where Jesus is, uh, John is preaching and, and we have, um, actually I probably think that's Jesus. I'm not sure that's John even though it says John there, because I think that's Jesus saying up as, as Moses lifted up uh, the serpent on uh, in the wilderness. So I must be lifted up. Uh, and so I, I believe that's really what that's referring to. And um, so images or see if I can go back a couple um different types of images that might relate to this verse. This is just the, the New Testament, uh, the Holy Land in the New Testament. So it, it's tied to every, ver every verse in the New Testament and kind of see where different major cities are if you're studying that. And so, and then finally, kind of the more is the interlinear. Think of this as interlinear concordance, but when you first look at it, this is this is going to be the original language. Um, but down below is a concordance of every place that uh, a word is used, and uh, it'll be below this morphological. I actually need to click on a word here, but um, I'm going to go to the reverse interlinear. Let's let's choose the word loved, and so you're going you're actually going to it actually goes to a new page on on here. So you see every place in the Bible that the word loved in that exact form is used. It's used 96 times in 86 different verses and they're listed below. And it's a lot there. And so much so that I have to break them up into pages. And so you'll get about 50 to a page and then you click to the next page and it kind of tells you the breakdown of those different ones so you can skip to the area you want. So the easy, the easy one is the concordance. Uh, over here to the right, it'll show you where they are in the different books. Just another way to filter that same set. So if we, if we clicked John here, we'd get the 20 verses in John where loved. Now note again, this is just the word loved, meaning the past tense in the English form. And then up above in the gold here are the different, we can see in the New King James, there's 86 times in the New King James that it's used, but it's used 99 times in the Christian Standard Bible. It's used 89 times in the KJV, 92 times in the ESV. So you'll get a little bit more hits if you go to some of these than this, uh, the New King James gives you. As long as we're here, let me just, uh, let me 
we, we touched on this a bit last week, but we, we selected a very specific word, loved in the past tense, but that may not be, especially if we're in the New King, uh, depending upon the version, that's probably going to be loveth uh, in the King James. So you may want to get the root and just put a wild card asterisk there. So that's going to show you every form of the word loved. And you come over here and click on the go button. And now we went from 80 sometimes to 573 times. So you get the much greater uh, form. And it, it, it will tell you below are the exact phrase matches. What that means is that's going to give you the ones that are love exactly, L-O-V-E. And then as you scroll down, and we're going to probably have to go all the way to the bottom, these first seven, six and a half, if you will, are the exact versions. So if we went to 1 Corinthians here, we'd be loved, in love, I mean. And then right here where it splits and it starts over again with Genesis, those are the inexact forms. So he loves the people, he loved a woman, loved him greatly. These are the different forms of the word. So this, you get a clue here, trying, you don't want to have to scroll through 573 different ones. This will tell you where you have this break, where it goes from the exact form to the wild card form. And so that, that allows you to uh, uh, kind of filter down a lot quicker than searching through 486 verses. So that's the concordance, and you can just pick... You can do that. Let's go back to John 3.16. So you got to the concordance by clicking on the English word. So for God so loved the world, it reads down on the left-hand side, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the other columns tell you the information related to the Greek word. I want you to notice up, kind of up here, see, as I hover over up here, it hovers down below the same color. So that's the word that is translated so. That is the word that is translated for. That is the word that is translated love. And so... You can, you can highlight here and see the different words below and vice versa. As you highlight down here, you can see the gold up in the scroll are highlighted. So they're connected to each other. But going down in this, we're in the reverse in a linear. And, oh, well, the reverse in a linear just so you know, means it reads down in the order of the version of the version in English, so in this case, the KJV, because that's what the Strong's numbers are tied to. Even though I'm in the NKJV, Strong's numbers are tied to the KJV. So that's the form we read down. The interlinear is in the reverse. The interlinear is in the word order of the Greek. So as you can see, as I'm scrolling here, utos, utos, gar, that it goes down in that order, theos. So most people, if you remember back in our user preferences, it said, you're in a linear. What would you like to be your default? I would say most people would want to have the reverse in a linear, unless you know Greek or are familiar enough that you want to do that studying. You would want your in a linear to automatically go to the reverse as it does now. So let's continue on. The third column is the actual Greek. It's the Greek in what's called the inflected form, the Greek in the root form, which is the dictionary form, and the transliterated. If you wanted to try to pronounce that, how would you pronounce it? You pronounce that gar. Or you can listen to Justin Alfred. Strong's G, 1063. Gar, gar. And so that's uh, um, 
a quick way to kind of look at it or have him pronounce it for you. He pronounces the root form, the dictionary form. This is the dictionary form. So this is just like any other English dictionary. If you, if you looked up uh, oh, the word love, you would have under it loved, loves, whatever as, as subcategories underneath that, that that tell you it's past tense or so on. It's a, the same aspect in, in, uh, in Greek. And this is the inflected form that uh, changes that. And uh, if you're familiar with Greek, you'll understand that. And if you aren't, you don't care. Because uh, what you have is you have this nice little button right here that says parse. And this parse tells me that this inflected form and the dictionary root form is a verb. It's in the aorist tense. It's an active verb. It's an indicative mood. And it's third person and it's singular. And if you don't know for sure what any of those mean, you can come right down here and click on it. And it says, indicative means it's a simple statement of fact. If an action really occurs or has occurred or will occur, it will be rendered in the indicative mood. And so uh, this little parse button, you don't need to know Greek from Greek. All you need to do is be able to click this button and ignore all of this and just say, oh, this is an adverb, or he gave. He gave himself, and it'll tell you it's an indicative, it's a, it's a reality, and it's he, so it's the third person. Um, we won't go into Greek to discuss aorist tense uh, or all that stuff right now, but if you wanted to, you could click on the Greek grammar and download uh, it as well, but uh, you can go in and learn that the aorist tense is uh, emphasis on punctiliar action not on when it occurred necessarily. And so um, all this to say is you can just drill down as far as you want to as much uh, knowledge as you want um, to, to get a sense. But amazingly, people tell us they are very, they're very, very, uh, find this very easy to use without knowing any of the original language. They can go understand when your pastor says, you know, for God so loved the world and it's agape. Well, it is agape. This is the verb form right here, agapao. And uh, you can you can test him, see if he's correct. It it is, and uh, he can he'll he'll tell you it's in the error's tense and all what that means and, and good stuff. And you can see if he pronounced it right. Strong's G twenty five, agapao, agapao. Okay, and. Uh, you can click on this uh, G25 and then go read what the word means, agapao. Okay, we can uh, listen to it here again. It'll tell you it's a verb. It'll give you all the different forms of that. If you're interested in the Greek, you can go search all the different forms of that inflected form of agapao. You can have some basic definitions. And then probably the most in-depth definition will be Thayer's Greek lexicon. And we have this all the same for the, for the Hebrew as well, but it'll be a different, and you can read all, you can read the definitions of what that word means in the Greek. Now that's a lot of, that's a, that's a pretty hefty amount to read. And it's not the longest one by far. Uh, but, so what we did is we went and called out all of those verse references and put them down below. And if you want to find out what that word means in the context, such as John 3.16, all you got to do is click on it, and it'll take you in the definition to what that means. So it's to have a preference for, wish well, to regard the welfare of, because that's the previous um, dictionary entry. Each, each bold entry starts a new aspect of, of the definition. And so you can drill down without not having to know what agapao uh, meant. And uh, um, in a second, we're probably going to spend a little bit of time on this one uh, because uh, it's a good one to talk about uh, from different aspects. But that's a lot of information just on one button. I hope you under I mean, like the, uh, the amount of detail and the amount of information that's here. Uh, I think, Tony, you did a... Uh, uh, one time you took all the, the words on the site 
and based upon an average reading rate or something like that, how long uh, would it take for to read everything that's on the site? Do you remember? No. Like a, it was over a lifetime. Like you, you couldn't read oh. everything. Actually, what I uh, what I was referring to was the uh, just the audio commentaries, not the reading. We figured that if you had a newborn child and you started going through all of our offerings in the audio, you, that child would have to live to be 87 years old. And that's getting one Sunday morning, one Sunday night, and one Thursday, and the rest of the time listening, listening to the translations. And it's just not random messages. It's all hand-picked, very applicable. So a lot of content. And... Uh... We're just, we just started scratch the surface here. And so I just wanted to take a breather and say, do you have any questions? What do you think? What doesn't make sense? Or how, how, can, uh, how can we make this easier if anybody has any thoughts? And you'll have to unmute yourself more than likely before you, or Drew is in charge. Somebody's in charge, Dave is in charge. <laughs> Any questions at all just on the concepts or? You can also use the chat if you don't have a microphone active. I'll watch that too. Great, so who's first to have a question? You gotta unmute your mic or let us know somehow. Who's got a question on how to use the Blue Letter Bible on the website? Or just a Bible question, too, I think Jim was saying. You're open for Bible questions, too, right, Jim? I am. I'm open. Just a, if there's no specific questions on that, let me just go through one more. One more oh, go for it. Kind of thing. There, there's actual menus up here. to uh, as a, uh, We just went through one tool on the site. We have menus up here, uh, different types of searches, uh, all the, the context of the, the study material grouped into different ways. So before I said, if you wanted to go back and listen to that message by Walter Martin on the foolishness of God, if you came into study and clicked on audio and video commentaries, here's a list of the, the authors we have for uh, general and then women's ministry down below. And you find Dr. Walter Martin, and he's right here. And uh, that happened to be, in, I know it's in miscellaneous. And it's the foolishness of God, and we can. Uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter one, verse seventeen. The apostle Paul uttered. So, First Corinthians one seventeen, for uh, where he talks about the wisdom of the world versus the foolishness of God, and uh, in in here, you, as you highlight over scripture, it'll just pop up and show you the scripture, so you don't have to leave to go see what it's about. Uh, you can do the same thing with the text commentaries <clears throat> by different authors. So we saw Chuck Smith had, had written something on uh, probably all these categories on John 3.16. And so John 3 through 4, and you can read that context. Now in this case, we actually have the, this is a transcription of an audio. So we actually have the audio. If you wanted to listen to it. Have we got a message for you tonight from the Word of God. Yes. So, um, and then there's other study tools such as Harmony of the Gospels, which you mentioned before, other ways into those different things, timelines, different kinds of timelines. One good timeline to always go look at is the Apostle Paul. Why is, uh, it's always nice to know when the book was written. Let me try to explain expand this a little bit for you. Hopefully it'll be easier to look at. But if we go down to Paul, we can see here's his first missionary journey. And this was in Acts. You can kind of see where where he was. And then we got the what is probably the first book Paul wrote, Galatians. And then Thessalonians. And you can kind of see when the different books were written. And it, it does have an impact. And I think for today, even for us today, we might want to think about Second Timothy, where 
where Paul tells Timothy, don't have a spirit of fear. You know, uh, Paul, I mean, they're going to be facing tribulation. And uh, uh, Paul is telling Timothy, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. My, that was what he's, uh, just as Paul was getting ready to face death, he was writing to Timothy not to have a spirit of fear. Uh, we have devotionals, uh, daily devotionals, such as Day by Day by Grace by Pastor Bob Hoekstra, Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon, uh, Our Daily Promises that our staff created, and then a di uh, daily Bible reading program. And so let's, if we, if we uh, went to today's Day by Day by Grace, we could read the devotional for today. This is a good one on, on, on your need for grace on a daily basis. You can actually uh, sign up for these to be emailed to you. Uh, there's two ways to get to that. If you went to the index for that. So let me go back there again just to this Day by Day by Grace index. And you say, uh, visit your user preferences to sign up. And that's the same. This should look familiar a little bit. This is our, how we get when we have an account and we click on the gear button, we can subscribe to the different daily devotionals and you can get it in text form or HTML form and um, have it sent to your email on a daily basis. And um, we have the daily Bible reading program. So here's today's reading for uh, the program that I'm under, which is uh, the Bible in two years, five days a week, gives you two days to catch up at the end of the week. And uh, it allows me to read that Bible uh, range. And then I just click Mark is read. And now um, it, it keeps track of it for me. And uh, if I have what's called accountability on it, it will bring me back to the last page I read, even if I skip a couple of days. And that's all when you sign up for it in your reading program. I can turn accountability on, and that means it keeps track for me. And so we have different plans, a canonical plan in one year, meaning starting in Genesis through Revelation, a canonical five-day plan over two years, which is what I just talked about, and then different types of, of plans that you can join in for, for that. Um, so that's a lot of information. So of course we have video tutorials that uh, if you click on help and go to video tutorials, we have uh, a huge number of uh, tutorials here to guide you through everything, especially like searching and customization, different aspects, uh, different uh, other aspects of uh, how to use the site. Different, uh, different uh, products that we have. So the apps, if you want to download the app, Scripture Mark, which is, is another tool which we're going to show you um, at some point today or next week. Different tools, if you have a website, these tools you can put on your website uh, to the script tagger is, is the, let me go back to, uh, have an example on that page. So let me just go do this different. So when you're in here, any kind of thing and you hover over this tool in our product section, Script Tagger, is a free tool you can put on your own uh, website to use that on your website or uh, WordPress or whatever it might be um, able to use that. A search tool, the same search tool that's up here, you can put on your website and we'll call it Blue Letter Bible. Uh, we have a CD-ROM for people that don't have internet access and uh, various other products. And uh, we 
we have a Blue Letter Bible Institute. Uh, if you want to take in-depth Bible study classes, these are Bible college classes that uh, have been uh, translated uh, or transcribed, I should say, from uh, audio and in some one case video. And uh, you can take these courses for free and enroll. And uh, that's another feature. And then a little bit of information about the Letter Bible. And then uh, if you want to donate to the ministry, you can do so there. And so uh, don't forget to look up here in case you're wondering if something uh, might be available and you don't know where to go. Um, kind of look through these different aspects of, of the site. So, any questions? Any thoughts? If not, I'm going to go on a little bit, but I'm, I want to give you the opportunity. I want to show you a couple of search features that are very unique, but uh, I'm, I'm open to I'm just hammering you with information, and I know that can get a little overwhelming. So. All right, you heard the man. Anybody got a question for Jim or the Blue Letter Bible staff? If you do, again, you can either type it in, type your question in the chat box, or unmute yourself here, or wave your hand or something. So uh, David, David did some an analysis while we were waiting here, and David, uh, okay. David determined that uh, the uh, uh, the Blue Letter Bible is equivalent to about 80,000 pages of content. So however long it would take you to read 80,000 pages, that's, that's how long. Uh, and then you could spend 87 years listening to what you didn't read. So. Oh my. Um, I, I got a quick question if I could. This might help. Um, I use the site as well as the app on both an iPad and an iPhone. But what are some of the key differences, could you tell us, between, say, the, the website and the app? Um, the app will not have as much in the area of the study content and the I don't believe it has uh, much. Uh, I'm not even sure the devotionals. Uh, um, are there. I know Jordan, if Jordan is still available here. Um, but there's just cert there are certain things that aren't as easily um, visible. So for example, when we did this, this uh, Jesus faith love, this kind of stuff on the right hand side where this kind of filtering, if it's there, you, uh, the app is not going to be there at all. Um, You'll have, you'll have the listing in this context, but you won't have this filtering that you're able to do off to the right-hand side. If you're on the website on a mobile device, it depends on what you're on. If you're on an iPad, you'll pretty much see this as it is. Um, so it won't be, won't be too, too different. If you're not, and I don't know, let me find an easy way to show this. Um, I'm gonna have to... If I come down to the bottom, and you see this button that says View Mobile Optimized? Yeah. If you were on a phone and you click that, it would change how this is formatted. So you might, uh, sorry, grab the wrong thing. It, it, it changes it to the size of your screen. And so you just have to, you, you now have to click on to these to get the different information that you saw before. But for example, that filtering that you saw before on the right hand side, that's not, that's not really there very easily to, uh, to grab. So there's those kinds of, of um, things that um, might not uh, be on the, on the uh, app, especially in, like this case, the FAQ search. Um, the detailed Boolean 
logic, and I haven't even gone into it. Um, so let me kind of, I'm now kind of stuck here in view optimized mode and what I need to do to get myself back out of that. So yeah, if you go to the home page, there's the view button. I, I just that. want to show them this first. Oh, yeah. So view, view the desktop mode, that puts you back in the desktop mode. Okay, so on, on any page but the home page, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see this toggle, view mobile optimized or view desktop. So that'll get you, you can use it on your phone if you don't want to use the app. Um, wow. If you're on the home page, as Dave, go ahead, David, I was about to say. So yeah, it's just the view button right there. Perfect, yeah, you're already there. View button, you can choose right there, desktop or mobile. Um, and it's just the amount of content and how how easily with the real estate it's viewable. How much how many levels you have to go in uh, to do it between the mobile optimized and the website. The app uh, just doesn't have as much just because you have to download all that to your phone. Um, a lot of it you can you can access all the commentaries, uh, the translations, all of that. Uh, there's just a few things that uh, really aren't aren't. Uh, available on it and I don't have the, the entire list other than the devotionals and the help um, and uh, some aspects of that but I mean the app is okay. Thank is, you. Uh, is pretty healthy in, in what it what it provides yeah, one feature that's in the apps currently but not on the website yet is the ability to have a parallel Bible side by side which can be really handy so we're hoping to get that on the web soon so you, if you wanted to, for instance, read a passage side by side in um, in the RBR 60 for Spanish on one side and in the New King James on the other side in English, then you can do that in both the Android and iOS app, even oh, on the phone. Cool. And you're going to have that on the website later, you're saying? Hopefully. That's the, that's the plan. Okay. <laughs> and all your emails to Dan. I don't know if you remember his email from last week. Uh, we gave you his email last week. Go ahead and send him an email because that's on his uh, <laughs> his plate. Um, okay. uh, this search feature up here, I, I mean, I showed you a basic uh, kind of word where where you could do a word or a phrase. It's pretty unlimited. I mean, you literally could pack an entire verse in there. Um, it, we A phrase, Jesus, faith, love, we did that. But let's say you wanted, um, for example, we had Jesus, faith, love as an example. And if I click it, it will go there. But let's say if you're familiar at all with what's called Boolean logic, and that's why I said this gets a little bit more in depth, is you can do things like you want Jesus and faith or love. or love okay and let's say it's the or the is jesus and faith are the together or love i want any verses that have jesus and faith in it or love and it will give me those and you see how fast it did that i mean i hope you appreciate uh, it takes, took longer to display it to you than it did to find it uh but there's 484 times where it's either jesus and faith or the word love and so Again, you have all these filtering over here. You can get pretty wild with this um, uh, Boolean logic. So let me go to love. Now, if you remember, um, we had agapao, and just for memory, I happen to know that's G25. So I, I want love that's not... Um, now, it's not going to be G25 in the Old Testament, so I should really limit this. This is my advanced options. I should limit this to the New Testament because the entire Old Testament is going to come there with that, um, wherever love is in the Old Testament. And so these loves here that you see are um, not G25. And I'll show that to you pretty easily. If I switch the version to KJV and... I turn on up here Strong's numbers, you will see the actual strong numbers as they are. And so this love has the strongest number G5368. Well, what is that? So if you 
I'm going to click on an open in a new tab for the sake of ease. And that's Strong's G5368. Phileo. Phileo. So it's Phileo, right? From Philadelphia is uh, derived. And I'm not going to go into what the meaning of that is right now because that's my next little session here once we go into it, uh, agape and phileo. And uh, so I'm gonna leave that for a second, but you can do these kinds of Boolean logic that both in the strong numbers and the English and cross or the Hebrew for that matter. So um, Lord, that's not H3068, and I just happened to memorize that. I don't expect you to know that, I'm, but uh, that happens to be Yahweh. So, um, so, these will be lords where the Lord is not talking about the name Yahweh. So in your Bible, if you know, if you, if you don't know this, you probably do, but if you know that uh, in most Bibles, if not all, um, if it's capitalized like that, and it may have small caps, so a big L, but the ORD is in smaller caps, that's a indication that the underlying um, Hebrew word is Yahweh, Jehovah. Jehovah, but however you choose to pronounce pronounce that. So, but there's another word that is pronounced that is translated Lordness Adonai. And so one my example over here that I had before is these are all the lords that are not Yah Jehovah. And so these are all Adonai. And uh, that's that's a way to get that if you you know well how would I know Yahweh Jehovah is H3068, right? And how, because we, we come over here, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, click on the tools button, go to my reverse in a linear, and this Lord says Jehovah. So I know, okay, that Lord is Jehovah, and that's H3068, and now I have that. Today, the, the, the more scholarly uh, information tells us that that's probably pronounced Yahweh. Um, there's, so uh, there's no V really in Hebrew in that, in that sense. But you can see the different uh, um, ways that that's done. So that's one way to search. Uh, it's a very powerful search feature. Now we just talked in a certain sense about well love. Well, what are all the way? What are all the original language words that are translated love? Because we're dealing with English. We're the, you know, we're not as smart as those Greeks and the Hebrews and uh, that. How would you find out all the words that are translated love? And and we actually make that easy for you. So if you came up here into the search, this. It says Hebrew or Greek search by English definition. So if I type in love, I'm going to get all the words uh, in their definite, in their uh, root form that are translated love. Now, wow. the way I've done it, so here you can see agape, which is G26. It's the noun form of agapo. Um, but you might get some... Uh, you might get some weird ones because you see, well, you got cloven footed. Well, that's because it has love in that <laughs> word. Well, there's a way to get rid of that because if you just type it in, it, it kind of does a fuzzy search, any part of the word. But if I want an exact match, I can come up here and, and say, and that's going to limit it to where is just love. And basically these, these are King James translations of the things. If the King James was translated love in that form, uh, it will do that. So you have your different forms of love, agapao, agape, phileo, and all the forms of phileo, Philadelphia, Philadelphos. Those are all inflections of, of uh, the word. So there's two basic words, phileo 
and agape in the noun forms and agap agapo in the uh, verb form. So you can do that. You don't need to know Greek. You don't need to know Hebrew. You just need to know how to type the word you want in there and then go search and you can learn more about that word, agape. So Strong's G26, agape. 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 Got to look at those uh, accent points. So that's another, that's another uh, search tool that we have. And then finally, the multiverse retrieval. By the way, if you just click on this instead of hover it, that's why I was hovering. If you actually click on it, it'll take you to the page. Uh, this multiverse retrieval is, uh, especially if you're a teacher or you're writing a paper, is just a good way to get uh, the verses if you know a string of verses that you want. So let's say I, I get, I want Romans 1, 15 through 17, Philippians 4, 4, Colossians 1, 27 through 29, and I pick my version. Let's pick the CSV for this, and I retrieve it. I can now copy that to my clipboard and open up a document and, and uh, pay, paste that in. So you can come over here, paste it in. And, and uh, if you have a long list of 25 verses and you're preparing a sermon or some Sunday school teaching or something like this, a very easy way to get your verses. Now let's, wow. up here you can kind of see I did this as a paragraph and I did this as a paragraph. Let's say you don't want it as a paragraph. Well, we make that easy too. So you can come down here and change how you want that formatted. I want this line by line. Okay, I come up and retrieve it again. And now each one is on its own line. Oh, but this one has the reference at the end. I like the reference at the beginning. So I click it again. And now I have my reference at the beginning. Oh, wait, I don't want the reference at all. I just want the verse. So now you just have the verse. Or you just want the reference. And I use this. There's times you want to use this if you're writing something and you just want the oh, verse. Very cool. I don't want the abbreviations. I want the real word. So I come down and retrieve it and I can get the real word and I can get it or the real book name, I should say better retrieve it. Copy that to my clipboard. Come back over. And paste it all in. So makes it easy uh, from that standpoint. So there are uh, different searches. And uh, this is also a really good way to keep a verse list. So this, as long as you start, once you start a session, you just kind of keep that open. If I come across a verse I like, uh, I can add it to it. So let's say here, Genesis 18.3. Oh, I, I, I want to put that in my, in my list. And all you have to do is separate them by semicolons or line breaks and now Genesis 118 is part of my um, listing and it'll do it in the order that you have it listed or you can say uh, I want them sorted canonically so retrieve it and now it'll do it in order from Genesis to Revelation in that order so all these tools to help you um, kind of uh, search and and do that you can do searches uh, of the FAQ so uh, remember before I kind of oop I didn't spell that right eternity I can do our Don Stewart FAQs got 76 different frequently asked questions on eternity does God dwell in time and so Don will answer uh, specific questions um, related to that. So you have, you have a question. This is one of the first places you can kind of go to and say, I got a question about, you know, heaven. And so, um, go and does heaven actually exist? What will it be like? Who's going to live in heaven? Will we remember our loved ones in heaven? That's a common question. So, uh, you can have who will, whom will be married to whom in heaven? These are all common questions that people ask and so on. So 
different search features of, uh, and you can uh, browse different, those dictionary entries, you can browse them by topic. So you can just kind of F, here's my faith, if I want to do faith, it kind of, you can filter down quickly to the different, the first two letters, futility, let's see if futility is, <laughs> nope, it's not the future, and, and go to it. So very, very powerful search features to try to find what you want. You can put yeah. these right here. Remember that widget thing? So you can put this on the right-hand side of your thing so you can access these right here. Go back to that, that uh, your sign-in for your account. And down at the bottom, it says select and drag to your widget. So if you want your widget, the multiverse retrieval, the BLB searches, which one you want first, you can order them. And then uh, that will be on the right-hand side, except for the homepage, that'll be on the right-hand side of your, and I'm getting to the extent, you can expand it right there to do your searches right there. Select your versions. If you need a little help, you can click the question mark, tell you on each one of these what to do. So search, the searching is a very, very powerful tool. Um, as I said, we could, we could uh, put in, and when you put in the verse, you click this little arrow here. I could, I could, for some reason, I wanted to search all of that. I could stick all of that in there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's all there. <laughs> and, uh, it's going to find that verse, so it it can do uh, pretty pretty long phrases. And uh, wh whenever you search, you can have dictionary entries. That's our lexicon. Remember, I told you that lexicon was that probably won't work with this uh, uh, very well. Um, but basically, the results from this lexicon search the search of the Greek and the Hebrew by English uh, is also in our tools tab. So that's, um, that's kind of uh, the various tools. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything that uh, a lot of content that I, I'm not addressing, but the, from the, the basic operation, if you, if you, uh, just, little little tips uh, we, we do uh, we do not have advertising on the Bible pages this isn't really an advertisement this is our internal banner up here for uh, within our or for sponsors who provide us content we'll, we'll put that there um, but uh, if you go to a normal page of non-biblical content you will have other advertising that we think it's all biblical it's not Google advertising or something like that. Um, but um, sometimes in, on certain pages, and I'll go back to the Bible, uh, this just isn't wide enough for your preference. So you can click on these double arrows and it'll widen it out to full screen, get rid of that uh, stuff there. Or you want to change the size of your fonts. You, color of your fonts or whatever you want. You can click on that little AA right there and uh, change uh, the different things. So Okay, I got a question. So one thing is we have format uh, by, this is by verse. If you remember, I chose that as my default format. I can change that right here real quick to view it by paragraph. Okay, so uh, you can do it that easily, switch between the two. If you happen to be in either the King James or the NASB, they have the Strong's tied to them. And so like you're here, if you click this Strong's button, it will give you Strong's numbers uh, to go to the lexicon. 
And let's say you wanted to listen to this, right up here, this button, listen to the Bible. We could listen to it uh, in chapter three. After dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. And Teacher, he said. If I chose the wrong, you can, you can choose the other. You've got uh, various English versions, dramatized or narrated. And then we have the uh, uh, Spanish RVR. And so, and then one other question that came through was, like, if you're doing it, um, an academic, whether it be high school academic term paper or some other academic, and you're, you're in here and you want to quote, you're going to use something from here in your paper, you're going to paste it in your paper, and, and if you're doing good uh, uh, academic work, you're going to cite where you got that from. You're going to put a footnote where you got that from. And how do I footnote this? Well, we make it easy. Right up here, there's a button that says cite this. You click on that and you have the four different common formats about how to cite that page and you click on that and it'll come across. And there's your citation for your paper. And so it's easy enough just to uh, click and or on the app we saw last week, if you wanted to share this, you could share it. You could share this by these various uh, formats, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and so on, right from here. And so you, um, that's one aspect of being able to share with other people. What? Anything else? So I'm at, we're at an hour and 40 minutes, so I think we're just ready to take uh, questions or uh, what, you, what you have or, or um, can show you one more feature set uh, if uh, it's totally, totally from a different uh, audio visual uh, perspective, if you want me to, uh, we're actually going to have David do that if you want to do that tonight, but uh, I, I want to be respectful of your time as well. So questions? Or um, we can do, what is it, about 10 minutes, David? Yeah, that sounds about right. And just, it's, it's kind of unique and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Okay. Um, so when you go to the inner linear concordance, you only have it on English, right? Like, is there any, are you working on Spanish? Is it something that you are, planning or you have it and maybe I haven't found it. Okay, so yes, this is only in English. We do not have this in Spanish. And, and here, here's the dilemma with that. So is someone has to, the actual translators know what they use to get from the Greek or the Hebrew in the Old Testament to their word. Uh, if they did not record that and do not make that available, all other people are doing is guessing. And we don't like guessing. So the only works right now where that is readily available, at least in, and I don't know of any non-English ones and all, other than the actual Greek, which you don't need the strong number, but um, uh, is the KJV and the NASB um, have actually, if those are officially known. The other ones, to my knowledge right now, are not, uh, translators uh, did not make that available. I even talked to the people at uh, uh, Thomas Nelson, the New King James uh, um, translators, and they did not have a digital record of, of what they, how they went from one to the other. And they may, they may not, because they may not have used Strong's numbers in, mm -hmm. in their context, probably did not. So, um, Someone has to go through the hard work of trying to figure that out. Um, and uh, so right now, the, the only interlinears or reverse interlinears that are tied to the Strong's are New King James, the N I'm sorry, the King James, the NASB, or the actual original language. So, I mean, if you, I mean, we, 
we have the original language here in mm -hmm. which is tied to the strong so those are the only ones that i know that are available and it would be i, I don't even know that we could do it from mm -hmm. You'd really have to know the language really well and presume to understand their translation. Uh, so, some of the more formal, like ESV or, or uh, New King James, might be a little bit easier. But when you get to the dynamic translations like the NIV or the NLT, uh, you, uh, there would be no way to try to do that. Because like a guess. Yeah, you'd be totally guessing what words they're trying to um, to do so uh, that that's a good question and uh, we're trying to uh, uh, get better data for the Hebrew to the English um, right now and uh, even that is very difficult to find I mean we found one person one company that uh, has done it but they won't even license it to us so we can't figure out why they did it because they they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to make it available to us so I, or anybody so it's a little bit difficult mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you just come into issues with copyright so certain certain publishers are just don't uh, okay. want to give information so, but that, very good question thank you gotcha. jim i also have a question on with spanish but also in the searching the way that you're doing the the boolean searches is that available also for spanish like if you were to type in spanish words i do believe so so uh let's let's do this by go to spanish and just for the sake let's go ahead and copy this in since so yes if you know the spanish you can you can search the Spanish. If you know the Latin, you can search in Latin. If you know, uh, so any of these uh, versions right here, including these languages, are searchable. Okay, that's good to know. Now, the, the ones tied to, if you wanted to do this and G25, that wouldn't work because we don't have the Strong's for the Spanish, as we just talked about. Makes so sense. that it would just it would just be this aspect of it. But you could do these, you know, you could do, you know, para and not, you know, you could do that kind of, you still can do that. Oh, great. So the logic works for any of the translations. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. The wild card as well. So you could do yeah. C-O-N-T um, and then the asterisk and it would get contigo or contra and those kinds of words. So yes, you can. We did that. Uh, I'm not that great in Spanish anymore from high school. <laughs> the different ones, but uh, the wild cards do work. That's good to know. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions at this time for Jim or the Blue Water Bible website or their staff? So I have another question. So if you are looking for, let's say I'm looking for the word comfort, and you were mentioned something before about like, okay, there are a lot of pages for such word. And let's say you want to narrow it down to. Um, yes. So. Like, yeah. Can you go a little bit more into that? Sure. So there's a couple, different, a couple different ways. If you, the first way was if you do a search on comfort, one, I would do comfort with a, asterisk to get comforted or you know those other forms of comfort with it so let's just do that so we got we went from 59 to 112 and and you can just uh, uh, filter those out when you do this so there's two ways to do that if you scroll down to the very bottom you have this 
by different books. So in our case, we only have two pages, but, but let me give it, let, just for an example, if we actually did Lord, okay, we're gonna get you know thousands of, um, okay, so 6,000 verses. So if you scroll to the bottom, you can, you can kind of see the different ranges. So if you know the ranges uh, this way, a far easier way though, is just to look over here and say, okay, here are the ones in Genesis. Here's the ones in Ezekiel. I just want to see that. So there's Ezekiel. So now I'm just looking at the ones in Ezekiel. Okay, now I want to go to, to look at Philippians. Philippians, so, okay. And um, I noticed that um, there's not a whole lot. Let's go back to comfort now, just to get my other... Same thing, you can do this. But now if you notice, the KJV uses comforted or comfort wildcard 119 times, New King James 100. So you get a little bit more, you get an, another uh, 19 verses in the KJV. So you might want to click on that to see if there's any differences. Um, someday, we're going to have the ability to compare them and look at the differences, not just the, so we, so when we click on, so you could see the 19 that are different, which uh, uh, we don't have right at the moment, but which would be really easy for us to do at some point. And um, change, you could change, change the version there if you want. So those are kind of the two different ways to uh, narrow the word. Um, you could also just from the start if in your advanced options, click on this list and, and break it. You want to, these are, the whole Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. This first group here is the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, historical books, and so on, these major groupings, the new groupings of the New Testament. You could, you could just start your search right there. So I only want uh, the Pauline epistles. And so that will limit it here on the screen to the Pauline epistles. And this kind of tells you that you have advanced option sets so you don't forget it. Uh-huh, yeah. So that's the ways from the search to kind of filter down uh, the results. Did that answer? Yeah, that's good. That helps a lot. Thank you. And do you always, sorry, do you always have to put the start for like, what, what, what was the start for? Oh. If I just do comfort, I'm not going to get the word comforted. Or like this, uh, word, this word comforteth in the KJV, that's not going to come. Well, it will because it's in that, there's other words in that happen to verse, in that verse. But let's see if we can find one. It won't pick up those other forms. It's only going to pick up um, the actual word comfort. So it would miss that that one right there if that were the only one in the verse so by putting this the star you get comfort with any ending after it so oh, okay. okay comforts let's say or comforted or comforteth those will all be in when you do put the star uh, and, and that's a common it's just a very common is is uh, people will search and say i'm searching for this i know it's there i can't find it and it's because it will end up being something like comforted instead of comfort and they don't put the wild card. Okay, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and if I could say just a quick comment, like I love that you guys have the both um, viral things on, on the app. Because I, I use my phone more to read, and I read in English and Spanish. Like, if I don't understand something in English, I just can't look in the other side. So it's, it's very helpful. So thank you <laughs> for doing that. Go ahead. Hi, um, I was um, putting together a PowerPoint presentation, and when I when I copied and pasted 
Um, there was a problem trying to put it into the PowerPoint. Um, is there, was I doing something wrong? Or? Uh, it will kind of depend on uh, where you're copying from. And, and one feature I haven't shown you is anytime you have a list <clears throat> like this, these little check boxes, well, are um, indications for this verse that you want to copy it and see up here on this third context bar, it says copy. Mm. If you click on that, it will copy those verses that you selected. And remember all of that, um, those copy options, um, those are all applicable at this level as well. So whether it be in the Bible or whether it be right here, you can, you can click on any verse and then, and then copy it that way. What typically happens is you have an issue between Microsoft and, and uh, um, just in, in certain characters and so on. So we, we generally have this set so that when you copy is copying it as pure text. So there really shouldn't be an issue um, in a certain sense. I'm gonna start Word just to see. We've got a PowerPoint presentation on the back side, so I don't wanna open that at the moment. But here, let me format this to our screen. I mean, it, it, should, it should paste in just like that. If you, I will say, if you, let's say we went to the treasury of scripture knowledge, there are examples like this where people will try to highlight this and copy it. That, you'll get a bunch of garbage just because you're copying all this code that formats the HTML page. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to click these buttons like this, or if you want everything, you can click the entire copy TSK, it copies the entire thing. Mm. and then bring it over and, and paste it in. So it depends on how you're, you're uh, uh, getting it into your clipboard. If you use it using these copy functions, it should be okay. Um, if you're doing it by highlighting the screen, it's hit or miss whether it will work depending upon the HTML formatting that's underneath it. So th that more than likely is the issue would be my, what I would say. Okay, thank you. Do those copy to clipboard functions also strip out the footnote markers? I've run into issues where I've had presentations that said FN in the middle of a, a verse and people say, what is FN? Well, there was a footnote marker there. <laughs> so yeah, using those copy functions is, is really helpful. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my question is about the whole app. Do you um, usually update it time to time or does it give us notification on our phone when you update it? The, I don't, I'm not sure what kind of notification since I use the beta, so I don't know. David, you, um, yeah, I know on the Android app, it'll it'll tell you on your notifications bar if there's a note if there's an update for the app itself, um, and it'll just take you to the Google Play Store and you can update it from there. For the iOS, I think it should be pretty similar. When there's an update, um, if you're not in the beta, it should give you a notification that there's an updated version. So you should get an. You're saying you should get a notification. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's definitely the case on the Android. And, and, and uh, they are generally updated. Um, roughly once, you know, one to two months, uh, that is updated. Uh -huh. So I would go within, if you're on iPhone, I'd go in the app store and just, uh, check for an update on that and, and do that if, if you don't see the notification. Okay. Thank you. And I just want to make a comment since I'm a beginner in, in, you know, like Bible study, I really, um, this is really a good app because it's easy to navigate also. and it's easier for me. I'm just so blessed that to have this app. And thank you guys for creating this app. Thank you. You're welcome. The Lord's one that made it all available. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Thoughts, Drew? What, how would you like to proceed? Well, I don't want to burn you out. <laughs> we'll keep you guys on as long as we can. <laughs> well, I could let David show you the other thing. It's a new. It's our newest product. Your newest product. Your newest product. It takes about ten minutes if you want to see it. Anybody else have any questions? If not, we're going to transition during this time. If that's okay with you and the Blue Letter Bible Crew. And uh, go for it. I would suggest uh, David get set up, and you can take it from me. But uh, I would suggest that. Um, you, you go on to Blue Letter Bible and create an account. And for like scripture mark, uh, which he's going to show you, um, it will be um, uh, highly um, advantageous to actually have a uh, account so you can save uh, the items off that he, he's showing you. And so. I put a link to this in the uh, the chat there too for Zoom. Are you guys able to see Scripture Mark Experience the Next Generation of Digital Bible Study? Yes, sir. All right. I've got some good news for Andrea too. We're going to show you uh, a little bit of some Spanish features too that this uh, this app can do. So this will kind of tell you a little bit, and the link again is in the Zoom chat uh, to kind of get acquainted with this tool. It's kind of unique in that there's not I've not seen any other tool that's quite like it. Um, and the idea is to really make the Word of God a lot more interactive and to encourage people to slow down and really. Uh, drill down into into the Bible text and let the Holy Spirit show you kind of some of the themes that's in those texts. So you're, when you start out for the first time, you can go through a guided tour that will show you all the different uh, tools and what each one does. So I'll let you go ahead and do that on your free time. Um, but I want to go over some of the ways that you can use this tool to be able to see the themes inside Scripture. So I'm going to go to Add Scripture, and it automatically populates with this 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 through 4. That's our verse of the day. You may have seen that earlier when Jim went through our homepage and had the verse of the day right on there. And that's also our daily promises verse. And so when you click add, it puts it right there on your, on your canvas. You can select your different translations. So if, if you wanted to add that in Spanish as well, you could put it on the Reign of Valera 1960 there and see them side by side. So are you, Andrea? <laughs> and uh, you can change your font. You can change your size, your line spacing. Um, and one of the things, too, that we're working on right now, I, all of you are somewhat deputized into our open beta right now. Uh, this product hasn't been officially 100% launched yet. And so we would encourage you to, to play around with it. Let us know where we can improve and where we can do things better and uh, how we can make this tool more useful. One of the features that's in that beta as well is the ability to convert the interface here into Spanish. And again, this is uh, very, very pre-release. So you guys are, are one of the first ones who gets to see this. But for Andrea and other uh, Spanish speaking people out there that you might have that want to be able to drill into the Bible, um, all of these menus now are translated into Spanish and all the tools that you'll see are also in Spanish as well. So I'm going to switch back into English. Um, you can also change between different themes, different preferences. Again, you can drill down into some of this on your own. But the idea is to make, again, the Word of God super, super interactive. And so the first thing that I like to do when I look at a passage is I like to break down the different themes and look at, at um, where the text is, is kind of breaking down into some like hierarchical categories. So, but the Lord is faithful. Well, how is the Lord faithful? Well, he will establish you and he will guard you against the evil one. He will, and we have confidence in the Lord about you, about what? That he is doing, the, uh, that he is doing and will do the things that, that we command, right? And so we'll do this one as well. You may ask, well, how on earth are you making those breaks? There's a couple different ways we can do it. Uh, when we select the text breaks tool, then you can see that it's selected by the different color that's on there. You can click on he, and you can say, no break, I don't want to break. Or you can say break, and that means line break to put it onto the next line. And then you can say indent or no indent. And you can even grab that guy and just move him wherever you want. And look at how the, the, the text on the canvas just flows to match that too. And so let's say that you want to go through and just a very basic level. One of the things I like to do is highlight all of my verbs in green. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what kind of action is happening here. So the Lord, the Lord is faithful. He will establish and establishes a verb there. He will guard. Uh, we have confidence in the Lord about you, what you are doing. There's all these actions and will do. 
you can see kind of the contrast between um, doing now in the present and then doing in the future. It gives you kind of ideas on what to look at in the passage. Um, so you go through these super quick. You can, you can create your own custom favorite highlight colors, or when you select different themes, you may have remembered I, I went to the settings here and picked the chalkboard theme, for instance. You can see that because this is a dark background, your scripture turns to white, um, to a lighter color, so you can see a little bit better. And each one of these has their own custom sets of colors that go with them. So these are the custom colors that go well with this theme. But you can add your own favorites as well. Um, and when you click on that, you can see those highlight colors and switch between them. So if you want to um, highlight faithful, for instance, in Spanish, or if you want to highlight Lord in yellow in both of these, you can do that. We got the pin tool. I'm just going to go through these super quick. My, my hope is that I'll pique your interest and that you'll want to dig into the Word of God on your own. And maybe you'll have more questions next week since we only have about 10 minutes. Um, but you can go and you can make circles and, and you can change your pin thickness here too. You can say... Um, let's see, Moss, uh, let's see, guard, how about guard right here, and then guard right here. You can see that one of the things that's really neat about this is that your, your lines always end up behind the scripture. So you don't end up writing over the scripture where a lot of people love to mark up their Bibles, but they're afraid that if you, if you have a thick, high, an overly aggressive highlighter, or if you're using a, an overly aggressive marker, you might mark out part of the word of God. And so that's one of the things that we make sure is that the word of God always stays forefront on those. You can play around again with all the different colors for those two. We've got shapes if you want to take a section and, and put a box around it, or if you want to put a circle, or if you want to add a triangle to show the, the triune nature of Lord here, you can do that. You've got lines, and what's really cool, I, I can't wait to show you about this part because it's one of my favorite, is you can take lines and you can say, I want it to not have a start, but I want it to have an arrow on the end, and then I want to link the word faithful and guard. We'll make a little thing here. And what's cool is now when I indent that, you can see that it moves with it. Even if I go over here, faithful is still here and the arrow stays over there. Or if I move guard to the next line, it keeps those arrow relationships, which is really cool. And then again, we can just unindent that or move it again where we want it to. And you can see the, the text responding accordingly. And so if I say a break right here, you can see that faithful goes up through that point we tell it to and right back down to guard, which is really fun. Again, you've got circles and, and lines. You can change these to be both dots or you can change them to be uh, just line or arrows and you can change the thicknesses. We've got sets of images. If you wanna look at, for instance, iconography, if you wanna say, well, I want Lord to always have a cross next to it, you can do that and put the cross right there. You can change the colors and the transparency. You can see in real time what those look like. And there's lots of different images we can go through there. So if there's a warning like guard against the evil one, we can put that that danger sign right there and put that right over evil. We've got add text and we've got, not only can you put your own text in here, like you could say, um, God is awesome. You can even like put a line break in there with shift enter. You can see that that's right there. Or you can go through and look at some of the predefined texts that we have here. If you look at a passage and you're like, I really don't even know where to start with this passage. We've got different themes that you can look at. You can look at observation, who, what, when, where, why, how, comparisons and contrasts and times and locations, cause and effect, those kinds of things. And look for those in the scripture. You can look at the, the interpretation and you can put these all in different layers. I'm going to get there in just a little bit to show you there too. But if you want to look at what's the context, what sort of reference is this, especially the New Testament, what sort of Old Testament references do I need to know? in this passage to understand what's going on here. Is this literal or is it metaphoric? Is this poetic? Is there history or culture that's involved in this passage? Application, what should I do about this? Should I should this passage encourage me to pray or to seek God or to surrender more or to learn or to apply? And then again, just themes and subjects, ordinal labors, labels. A lot of times you'll have verses that say first, second, third, fourth, um, greater, the, uh, the least or the greatest. And so you can put labels on those parts of speech like Jim showed us with those awesome interlinear tools. It's so useful sometimes to know the part of speech. Like you think about the quintessential passage on love, that love is patient and love is kind. Most people may not know that patient there is a verb. It's not a noun. It's love patience. And knowing that love is, that, that patient there is a verb, it's an active thing, can uh, redefine the passage sometimes when we look at it. So labeling those, uh, declensions, again, for those Greek tools, a lot of these are all Greek to you, but if that's your jam, and if you love digging into the original language and presenting that, um, Andy, I think, mentioned PowerPoint earlier. 
these are great for PowerPoint because you can mark up your passage, get it looking exactly how you want it to, save it as an image and just put it right in your PowerPoint. Uh, again, these are language tools, mood, Greek case, Hebrew stems and aspects, and then we're back to observation. So notes, you can create a little like sticky note on here and say command, command, you have to do it, not optional. <laughs> and then when we save that, it creates a little footnote here for us, which is fun. Mm -hmm. And then again, layers, if you wanted to add different layers, you could say images, for instance, I'm just gonna click add here. And then the best tool, if you've ignored everything I've said, because you're, you're so excited about digging description mark and you just can't wait, listen to this part, because this is super important as you start digging description mark. Down here in the bottom corner, I don't know if you guys can see this, is the modify tool. The modify tool is your very best friend. Because when you put something on the canvas and you're like, I don't like it there though, you can click on that guy and you can move him or you can drag it or you can modify it. When you modify, you can say, oh, you know what? I think that that should have been orange. Or you can say, I think that that should have been on the images layer. And so when we move it to the images layer, and then we hide the image layer with this little circle here, with a little eyeball, you can see that you can, you can now have different layers of markup as you go through the passage. So like I talked about the observation, interpretation, application, or whatever biblical model you ascribe to for understanding uh, the word of God and going through that systematically, you can create different layers to show what that process looks like. And so just to give an example, this is one that I did earlier today for a meeting we had uh, looking at First Peter, and they can get super fancy if you want them to, um, but you can have different, like again, my verbs are in green, uh, God, especially as you get into pronouns for, case, for tenses like the ESV that don't have the divine pronouns where it's uppercase, it gets hard to keep track of, okay, who is he? Is this Paul or is this God or is this, you know, who, what is the he we're talking about? And so you can color code those. You can break it down into different groups to look at, well, this is by God's mercy. Oh, this is by God's power. Um, if you have a, a device with a pen, like your, your iPad with your pencil, um, you can scribble right on there salvation and make it look all artistic. Um, if you want to look at, yeah, at these different themes between it, like for instance, I put this, this area was dealing with Jesus Christ um, and with the power of Jesus Christ unto salvation that we have. But I wanted to talk about faith and this talks about faith back here. So you can see the interweaving thought of, of the passage author and uh, the intention of the Holy Spirit as we, as we read through it and as we understand and we're intentional about listening to uh, what, what the original author being God wanted to communicate to us in his word. Cool. Was it 10 minutes? Did I make it? <laughs> yeah, I was muted. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> hey, David. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, far away. Uh, by the way, this that's awesome. So, quick question. You mentioned iPad. So this this is something that's browser based as an app, or is it like a standalone app? That's one hundred percent correct. Yeah, it's a browser based uh, web app at this point. We've talked about maybe someday making native apps, but right now it will run in your uh, in your iPad in Safari or um, in the browser of choice. I'm going to tell you is Chrome because this is really bleeding edge stuff. And Safari has been a little bit slower to, uh, to the race on adopting some of these technologies. But I know Andy, our Andy G, uh, uses it on the iPad quite often and has a good experience with it. So, and certainly our, our goal is to make sure that that has the best experience. One thing I will say is that on slower computers and especially mobile devices, um, you may not want to add an entire book um, especially Psalm 119 might make it a little bit slow. <laughs> and really the, the purpose of the tool isn't, to, isn't necessarily as a Bible reader, but it's to really just take a couple verses. They don't even have to be from the same passage. Um, they don't have to be contiguous. So you could put first Peter one, three through nine, right up there next to, uh, James one, two through three. If you wanted to look at, uh, the idea of God's sovereignty through suffering, you could put both of those right next to each other. Um, and, and have all your different, uh, layers and those sorts of things too. So yeah, you, long story short, you definitely can use it on your phone and on the, the uh, tablets as well. Awesome. So, so then if I understand correctly, we could use an iPad using the Chrome browser and it's an app that lives within the Chrome browser or the, mm -hmm. or the browser and we'd be able to use the pen? Yeah, that's absolutely like correct. Drawing? Oh, wow. Um, what's Very even cool. cooler, because again, it is that. a web app, is you can take your tablet and you can go from your tablet Save your project because you can save projects in here. You can even give them tags and you can share them. 
So I saved this one as Second Peter 1, 3 through 9. I, I gave it a tag demo. When you save that on your iPad and then you load it on Chrome or Safari or whatever browser of choice you use on your desktop, you've got that same project. And so you can access it from both devices. Okay. Yes, yeah, just to clarify, you're, you're saying uh, if you're using a desktop to use the Chrome browser, if you're using an iPad, you're using Safari uh, no matter what, you call, what they call it. That's correct, yeah. So, on, and if you're using uh, a Google tablet, uh, Android tablet, you're using Chrome as the browser. So uh, within the tablets, it's native to their, their individual browsers. But if you're on the website, and you have the choice. If you have Chrome, use Chrome because it far less problems with Chrome than with uh, uh, Firefox or Safari or other ones. Yeah, that's correct. Gotcha. And David, this looks like it's pretty much an app that was designed for inductive Bible study. Is that kind of correct? Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the major uses for it. Absolutely. Right. And not just inductive Bible study, although that is definitely uh, the one of the primary reasons, but also just think of Sunday school, children's ministry, uh, just any kind of teaching where with the layers where you can bring out the different aspects of it as you're teaching through that verse or so on, but especially helpful in the sense of visually, if you're, if you're teaching kids or uh, youth and so on that, how that might, uh, uh, look. And so, um, and it's so interactive that especially youth are just so drawn to it because it keeps them engaged. I've had times where I was teaching the youth and we just went through a passage together corporately and marked it up together. And it was so rewarding for them that it really, more than just be giving, you know, a, a half hour sermon, um, it, it engaged them so much more. And I felt like they got a lot out of it by being interactive and bringing them into the discussion on what is, what is, what does the passage mean? What is, how does this apply to you? Gotcha. And you said this is beta right now. It's beta, but it's open beta, which means that you can start using it yesterday or today. <laughs> yeah, so tell them how to, so no, notice the URL. It's a blueletterbible.org. All you have to do is put S mark, forward slash S mark after it, and you'll get there. Or if you forget all that and you just remember that it's called scripture mark, you can go to scripture mark here, just scripture mark.org. Or if you're on the homepage, um, it's on the products menu. I think Jim showed it here as well. And at some point we'll have a way from the tools button to, from the tools button, put it in the scripture mark once we're live and ready to go and all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And this and is all free or just free while it's beta? It's all free. Um, Jim, right now, yeah. the, the basic features that you're seeing right now are free. There will be, at some point, um, we think a subscription model to add uh, certain uh, features to it, just um, without having to share what we're going to do in the future. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, but uh, th there will be things where there will be costs associated and so on that we may have to uh, to, uh, and to help support the ministry. But the features, everything he showed you right now will be free. Oh, very cool. So if... if we adopt this and others, even when you do, do go to say perhaps a subscription or whatever it's going to develop into in the future, this base core feature marking up the scripture that'll remain free pretty much. Yes. Oh, okay. Everything you saw today. So, so for example, without like the images, you saw a bunch of images. We may, we may have some copyrighted images that we make available uh, that you buy as a set or, or your subscription includes uh, a set of images uh, that you can download to, to use or something like that, which more, more than likely will have some cost to us to, to do that. Um, uh, so uh, it'll just be different aspects or maybe how many you can store. You may be able to save so many projects, but if, if you, um, you know, there may be a point just to help support the ministry to do that for a small monthly fee to add these extra features that we're thinking about. Gotcha. I, I knew Susan would be into this stuff. She's, she's an artist. She loves the iPad and the pen, So she's, she's asking, can you add your own image instead of the images that are provided? 
So right now that's not a feature that we support. There's a couple different reasons. Um, number one is because we store all these projects on our servers and images take up a lot of space. Uh, but number two is this cool trick right here. So let's say that you want the throne of God and you want to make it purple and you put it there and then you decide you wanted to make it bigger. You can scale that without any loss of images. And that's because of the, the special way that we store those images um, and the special way that we provide those. That's what's called a vector graphic. Um, where if you added your own, your own images, like let's say a picture of Drew's face that you wanted to put on there, the bigger it gets, the more pixelated that face is gonna get. And so <laughs> <laughs> it makes sharing it in different places a little bit more tricky. So currently, um, it's just the images that are contained in right here. And certainly, once you save the image off, you can, uh, you can bring it into Photoshop or GIMP or Illustrator or your image editing app of choice and touch it up from there as well. Very cool. And is there any capability of connecting to this, like some hooks from, say, Google Slides so that we can have something that as this gets updated, you you bring up the slide and then it dynamically updates it? Or that sounds like a fantastic idea. I don't have any uh, any integration on that yet, um, but it's something I could look into, certainly. Now, I'm not you have integration. I mean, it really depends on what their API is, uh, what they let us share. Like, for instance, some places like Pinterest surprisingly have great APIs, and so you can put it to your Pinterest board if you wanted. Um, but others, which are image-based like uh, Instagram, unfortunately, don't want you to share images from the web. They want it to be mobile pictures. And so those ones make it a little bit more difficult. So it, it really depends on what they allow us to do. Okay, so there's a question. How, how will you be able to transfer your work in Scripture Mark to Photoshop, Google Drive, other apps? That is a fantastic question. So when you go to save, uh, you've got the, op the option right here to just download that as an image. You click it, it'll crop it, and it'll um, do some magic on our server to give you just that image without all of the white space here. And then you just save that or send it or copy and paste it into your, your PowerPoint or whatever you want to do. So you're, clicking, you're clicking on the click here, just kind of go through it verbally. Yeah. You're clicking, and as he clicked that, it downloaded it to his machine. And if you can see too, the, the resolution on these is fantastic. And that's because we don't use any raster images. It's all that vector stuff. So you can zoom in pretty far. Um, okay. So even if you wanted to put it on a t-shirt or on, you know, canvas art on your wall or a billboard <laughs> or, um, you know, like art for your, your children's classrooms, um, you can so do a search. These are all PNGs then, the files? Yeah, so it downloads as a PNG. Yep. Awesome. Wow, you guys thought that out. Very, very cool. And what's your limit for it for saving these on the free accounts? Is it? So currently during the beta, there is no limit, um, but it's really going to depend on utilization and some of the things that we discover by user behavior and uh, decisions gotcha. by management on um, what makes sense. Wow, very cool. Got to geek out on this. Very nice. Okay. Can we put our can we put our uh, watermark on there? I don't think Cameron's finished with the watermark yet. <laughs> but yeah, there, there will definitely be an option to put a watermark on there. One of the things we talked about too, and it's not an official feature yet, but one of the other things that we've talked about is when you save it, having an option to allow Blue Letter Bible to use this image and a process of review where um, Jim showed you the miscellaneous images that were linked to those verses. We could even use this at some point. Um, to be able to build Bible content to edify the entire body of Christ that would be linked to that verse. So it, when somebody's looking at First Chronicles 29, 11, um, if you share that image with Blue Letter Bible and it goes through that review process, that it could very well bless people all over the world. Oh, okay. Awesome. So it's in beta now. Any idea when that might be the actual release? It's been in beta for a while and it's been stable for quite a while. Um, I can't speak to a specific date, but I wouldn't expect it to be far away. I would think definitely in terms of months, um, possibly even weeks, but not years. Gotcha. So, I mean, effectively you can use this right now as if it were uh, live. I mean, it is live. So it, uh, what we haven't built in when we say beta is we haven't built in all the hooks into it. 
like to come from Blue Letter Bible and, and some of those things that we would add. But it, you can get to it from uh, the website or directly from uh, Blue Letter Bible. Uh, and uh, it pretty much has the functionality, 99% of the functionality it's going to have upon release. So Very cool. So what you see right here is uh, effectively... We're, we, we're taking the Google approach on beta. You know, Google has, I think <laughs> Google Mail is still in beta after 15, 20 years or whatever. But, uh, um, uh, no, so. All I right. got the thumbs up from Andrea, so I had to do a Spanish markup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. We haven't finished Tagalog yet, sorry. <laughs> and so right now, um, you can also, uh, you can load a project. So you work on it, but you don't finish it. You can come back right now and he just loads that project by loading it there. So you can continue on with the previous project. It's not yeah. saved as an image. It's saved uh, in the uh, very uh, computerized language that David has used and uh, it just creates it on the fly again and uh, you can save it off as an image as we saw to download it but uh, the actual um, it's saved in a different format for quickness and ease of use very cool and it's got an auto save too that can save every minute for you or two minutes or five minutes or ten nice. minutes i think that's one minute by default and then some other options uh, one of the things that we we're starting to use this just this uh, sunday um actually we're going to be doing this at our church for our live stream is pulling up the verses as our pastor talks about them on here. And so there's even the ability to, to hide those top right buttons. If you're not concerned about saving and sharing and all that, you can hide those um, to be able to use with your live stream to be able to follow along with your pastor as he reads um, on the live stream and highlight different things that he emphasizes um, as part of that message as well. So we're going to be playing with that next week at my church. So again, definitely it's got some inductive Bible study tools and I think that's probably the primary use, but I'm super excited to see all the different ways that we haven't even thought about that the Holy Spirit's going to oh, use. Oh yeah. This. Very cool. Good job on that. A lot of work David's put into it. Yep. It's been a labor of love. <laughs> awesome. All right. Oh, sorry, just one more thing uh, as you start playing with this, which I want you to be able to see is when you put an image on the canvas, I don't know if you see those underlines above or the, the dots above again. Yeah. And then they move to Jesus. That means that you're linking it to that. Wow. And so what linking means is if you put in a text break here, that heart's going to go with it and stay in that same relationship um, based on the word wherever it goes. So um if you run into that behavior and you're like, why does this heart love again? And it won't go away. <laughs> or if you want it to, if you want it to do that um, and it's not doing it, just make sure you look for even free form. You see, it's going to look to the center of that object. And so it's going to stay with Christ. And so if we text right here, it'll go with Christ. So just so that you're aware of that behavior. Very cool. There's a question David, if I wanted to have extra space in between scriptures, how would I go about doing that? That's a fantastic question. So on your scripture menu, uh, you've got your verse tools and your layout. So you can change your margin if you want extra space above, to the left, to the right, or to the bottom of the scriptures. But if you want to change the line spacing between, you've got the options for your line spaces right here. So you can go as high as four or as low as one. I like one and a half. Is it possible simply to put carriage returns in between or is it all formatted the same? Yeah. So you can definitely do line breaks wherever you want it there. Oh, there um, you go. Okay. One thing that it doesn't let you do that I'm going to be working on is adding double line breaks. So right like, now, Jesus Christ um, has a line break and so you can toggle that line break on and off, but you can't add a second line break to it. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. And then again, the, what you want to do when you're working on these is go ahead and sign in and create an account if you don't have one already, because it's going to be really hard to save your work other than just as an image if you don't sign in. Gotcha. Thank you. 
And then Andy Green put, nice job. I'm excited to play around with it to try with the youth and children. Awesome. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you come up with. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's the uh, educator that teaches the kids in the Bronx. Very good. Very cool. And church kids, too. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys were awesome. You went over and above. I like that. That's how God is to you. you serve an over and above God. He does exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And so do his children. You guys, too. So thank you, guys. I'm going to unmute you guys here. I know there's some that probably because we, we had you guys on here like a marathon, too. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Folks are still on. You guys want to say hi and thank you? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Jim, David, your whole team. Thank you so much. It was very, very, very informative <laughs> and useful, too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Jim, what, what's on the menu for next week? The menu for next week is to probably just go through doing a little bit of study and uh, answer questions. So come with some Bible questions. Come with, uh, can you lose your salvation? So I can have Pastor Drew answer that question. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll say, hold on, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, David, can I ask you one more question? Uh, can you do the margin thing again on the scripture mark? Yeah. The, the margin. Uh, Absolutely. Can we go ahead and pull that up? Sorry. No, no problem at all. See it again. So when you go to scripture, the scripture menu, and then you want the layout tab on the scripture menu. And so, for instance, if I change this from 2 to 10, you'll see there's a little bit more space above. <laughs> Or similarly, if, if I wanted to have a left side for putting notes or those sorts of things, I can certainly do that. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Did that so answer your question? The highest, yes, what's the highest Love number you. I can use for the- That's a great paper. question. I think I have it on here. 40%. 40, so it's gotcha. kind of hard to read, but it says max 40%. <laughs> Love you. All right. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm actually using it right now on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Susan likes to geek out. And then as you guys use that too, there's this beta feedback since you guys Love are now you. deputized beta testers. You can click on this beta <laughs> feedback. And if you have a, a bug or a question or a suggestion or a compliment or something else, you can go through that and, and let us know. Awesome. Will do. Thank you. That's so cute. So <laughs> <laughs> Bye. very good well again thanks guys appreciate that and for the folks that are on the call go on our free facebook group yeah. if you guys can leave leave some feedback i'm trying to get that to jim and his team so they love to hear Mom. feedback like what's your top takeaway from today i know it's like overwhelming <laughs> all kinds Bye. of stuff but if you can say what's your top takeaway or what's some feedback that you want to be able to give jim and his team would appreciate that. Okay, but but that's it. Thank you. Thank you, folks. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you for, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you guys. Everybody Absolutely. stay healthy and safe back there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Awesome. Can I close this with a word of prayer? Is that all right? Father in heaven, we thank you for this time and we thank you, Lord for the fact that you are that God that does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We thank you for the abundant fruitfulness that you've given the Blue Letter Bible team, Lord. And we do ask that you continue to provide for them. We ask that you would continue to give them much grace, much wisdom. And for all of us, Lord, that you would continue to please protect each and every one of us, strengthen us, encourage us, comfort us lord thank you that you're the god of all comfort continue to give us much comfort and grace lord strengthen and equip us to use these tools so that we can grow in your ways and also so that we could reach the world lord strengthen us for we do pray in jesus name amen, amen. all right thanks guys this is awesome thank you, so thank much. you. great see you guys next week all right well, thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, we're going to play around with that tool then. Scripture mark. Awesome. Yes. Thank Can't you. wait to see what you come up with. Right now, I'll click. <laughs>
Good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good night.